Do you want the $60 GAN 356X for half the price? Well, you're not getting it. But for less than half the price, you can get the Diane Tengyun, which is the cube that I think is most similar in feel to the GAN 356X. But whether or not this is a cube you should actually consider buying, that's what we'll talk about in this video. Also, thank you to Speedcube Shop for sending me this cube. Link and discount code are in the description if you would like to buy it. All right, the Diane Tengyun. The cube comes magnetic, and if you want to go with the option of stickerless, the shades are one of the best I've ever seen. Um, it's really weird that this has to be so rare, but yeah, these ones look pretty nice. There's a nice soft plastic feel, and the pieces glide together really well. The magnets are in a nice strength where you can't feel them all that much, but they definitely do help with alignment. This feels very different from a cube like the GTS-3, where the magnets are very strong and highly noticeable on each turn. My last two mains were the MF3 RS2M, which had weak magnets, and the GTS-3M, which has strong magnets. So at least for me, magnet strength is not a deciding factor in whether or not I like the way a cube feels, and it's usually just a matter of whether the strength goes well with the other qualities of the cube. And I'd say with the Diane Tengyun, it does go together quite well. Okay, so we need to talk about corner cutting. The last few years we kind of stopped seeing better corner cutting, but this cube legitimately corner cuts from anywhere you pull uh, when testing on any side. The closest we had before this was the GAN X, and I personally haven't seen this on any other cube in the past. So definitely props to Diane for taking cube hardware further in this aspect, uh, much like they revolutionized corner cutting with the Guhong many years ago. Now before we get all hyped about corner cutting, first impressions can be really deceiving. There's one problem I have with this cube, and although it is quite a small problem that I have been able to mitigate, uh, it stops me from being able to consider this cube as my main. So when I turn fast on the Tengyun, I tend to turn very inaccurately, like more inaccurately than on any other cube. At first, I thought it might just be me not being used to the Tengyun yet, uh, so I used it more and more, but it was still happening. Now, when I say I can mitigate this problem, all I have to do is relax my hands a bit and turn ever so slightly slower. Uh, this is obviously totally fine for F2L, as there's always that trade-off between turn speed and look ahead, so I can do fine without turning at my fastest. Uh, but having to go a little slower for last layer, otherwise risk messing up more, that definitely kills my confidence on this cube. Now, I can still get great averages because last layer turn speed is not everything, but I'd rather not have to deal with this, and I would just pick another cube instead. Confidence at high turn speeds is incredibly important if you need to turn very fast, uh, which is why I personally don't think we'll be seeing top cubers switch to the Tengyun. Now, don't get me wrong, top cubers will certainly be able to get amazing times on the Tengyun, just like with other cubes, uh, because I think this is a good cube. But I don't think it'll be a lot of people's favorites because of its performance issue. So here's the corner cutting problem on the Tengyun. I'm going to do reverse corner cuts from here, and as you can see, the reverse corner cuts are pretty great. Uh, but the problem is when you try it and do even just half like half, I mean this line goes halfway across the center. If you try to do half reverse corner cuts right here, fine, until you hold it like this. Okay, this worried me a little bit, but then I tried it on other cubes. GTS3, GAN X. So as you can see, this is not working on any cube, but I'm going to try it a little bit differently, and that is because um, when you do your turns, if you find that a corner cut tends to not go your way, you'll typically adjust in a way such that you can do it in the way you want it to go. So if you typically run into this case where you want it, obviously you want this to reverse corner cut, you don't want it heading in the other direction or getting stuck, you don't want it to get stuck. Uh, so what you might do is adjust your hands in a way so that you apply strength this way a little bit, um, and that tends to make the algorithm work. So that was on a really, really loose grip. So what happens when I have a really loose grip is these pieces stay in contact. Uh, which is exactly how, uh, I can't do it again, but exactly how reverse corner cuts happen. It's when those two pieces stay in contact. But when I do this, apply a little bit of force, still try and pull outwards as I do it, it doesn't do it anymore. Now here I'll try it on the GAN X. It doesn't work quite as well on this cube, but let's just see. Yeah, it doesn't always do it. Okay, that one was easy. Okay, so sometimes it does it. Now on the GTS-3, this is where I realized why the GTS-3 is my main. Absolutely easy. I just pull outwards as I do it and it works every single time. So we're gonna look at why that happens in the first place. The corner piece, when you do any sort of corner cut, the corner piece has a choice. It can either go down or it can go left when, you're, when it's over here. So if it chooses to go down, then it's a reverse corner cut. If it chooses to go left, well, I have to put it over here, then it's gonna be a regular corner cut. Now, when I hold it like this and just pull down, the edge completely pushes in the corner. The edge wants to go in this general direction. So of course they're gonna go in 
that general direction. If the edge doesn't fully push the corner piece, if I twist the edge a little because I'm holding it this way and it just naturally begins to twist, then as you can see, the top of the edge pushes on the top of the corner and that causes it to go this way. Now the problem is the bottom of the edge is no longer pushing on the bottom of the corner and that the whole contact is what caused the corner to move down in the first place, but only pushing on the top causes it to go left instead. So on the GTS-3, there must be some difference in the mechanism that causes this. So I'll put it around halfway again. And as you can see, it does it just fine. Um, I'm going to see what it does here. And as you can see, they started to lift off a little bit. So the twist started to happen a little bit, but before it got out of hand, the whole piece just snapped down. Now, I was really curious about why this actually happens in the GTS-3, which is good, and not on the Tengen, which is bad. Now, I looked at the design of the pieces to see if there was anything I could see that was different between the Tangen and other cubes. I've only used the GTS-3 here as an example, but I looked at the GTS-3 and the Gan-X, and as far as what I'm about to explain, they are the same thing. However, the Tangen is pretty different from them. So I'm holding them completely level from the top of the piece, but as you can see, the main contact area of where the foot of the edge and the foot of the corner touch is actually at different levels. Now, I might be totally wrong in this theory. I don't design puzzles. This is just what I think from my limited knowledge of science. When the edge piece rotates as I showed, both pieces are not making full contact with each other anymore. Since the edge rotates, anything further away from the center of rotation will apply a greater force, and things further down will apply less force. So since on the Tangyin it's not applying quite as great a force down here, then it's not pushing on the foot of the corner quite so well. Now the more it pushes on the head of the corner, the more it tries to do regular instead of reverse corner cutting. Now, I was trying to show reverse corner cutting, which is why the Tengen was having such a hard time doing it. Now, my other theory is that on the GTS-3, where the foot of the corner touches the edge actually has multiple contact points, but on the Tengen, it seems to just be one. Again, this makes it harder on the Tengen for the edge to push on the foot of the corner piece, so then again, it just pushes more on the head, which makes more regular corner cutting and less reverse corner cutting. So yeah, these two theories, in my opinion, both don't hold a ton of weight. Um, they are just the best theories that I can come up with. I don't know if this magnitude of difference actually makes the difference that I managed to show on the corner cutting, um, although it is the best thing that I've been able to come up with. So yeah, I'm just gonna go with this. You don't have to go with me on this. I'm not claiming that this is true. I'm just claiming that this is my theory on what it is and it might be this. A cube designer could totally correct me on that, but this is the only difference that I see, so that's my theory. Now we've actually seen this type of thing before if you saw my MGC V2 video, where if you try to do this and then push, oops, that worked for some reason, but generally uh, it gets completely stuck if you try to do this sort of corner cut. Now it is a reverse corner cut. MGC V2s are fine at reverse corner cuts. It's just that when you hold it that specific way, it no longer does it. So on the Tengen, you may be wondering when the heck am I holding it like this? Uh, well, maybe you won't, but you can set that up from a different angle. If I do this and try to do L prime, then that's the same sort of idea. Now, with all that being said, I can still get good times on this cube. The issue doesn't come up every single solve and you are seeing some pretty good solves here, but that's only because I'm pretty adaptable to different types of cube and I've adjusted my turning style many, many times before. So it was really easy for me to just use less sporadic movements and a slightly softer grip when I solve on the Tangyin, although I'd rather not have to do that. So that's why I don't think this can be my main. This cube is still awesome though, in its own way. And I also don't mean that it's good that Diane is making a comeback because that's like saying the Rubik's Speed cube is not that bad. Uh, if it's not a contender for the best and there are cheaper and better cubes, then who cares, right? Well, the Tengen has unique qualities that should be mentioned. I already mentioned it feels incredibly smooth and satisfying to turn, kind of like the GAN 356X, except it's less than half the price of that. Also, this cube is incredibly low pitched and quiet. Also, for the problem I mentioned with the corner cutting, I'm not sure what level you'd even have to be for that to start causing you problems, because it is a really specific thing, and sort of like the MGC V2, I don't think it's going to affect everyone. Uh, for example, if you average around 20 seconds or higher, I don't know if this would really affect you. So if you end up getting this cube, get it for the satisfying smooth feel and how quiet it is. Or if you're not at a level where you turn that fast, then maybe this could be like a cheaper GAN 356X that still performs great. So that's it for this video. What I want you to take away from it is that there are good qualities in this cube. And if you want it, get it for those good qualities because a lot of other cubes don't have it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.